now one person I think we've all admired, and you have particularly, John, um, is Maurizio Pochettino. Pochettino, the Spurs coach, for not just what he's achieved in very difficult circumstances with very little money to spend and certainly no money to be extravagant. Um, it's not just what he's achieved, it's his demeanour. It's his demeanour, it's his uh, conduct uh, and uh, his general uh, sort of sensible, uh, never to gone to extremes, although he went mad on the touchline. I don't, <laughs> don't blame to, him for I that. I don't blame yeah, him for that. that. Yeah. But you've admired him for a long time and uh, over the two legs, um, this was a remarkable tie, but really maybe one, uh, well, it was one the other night, but the first leg was very important. Uh, a one nil oh, win. Well, it always is. Um, no away goal for City. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's done a fantastic he job. Has, yeah, uh, of course he has. <laughs> and and it's been it's it's uh, as I said of Manchester United. I think she's gone well. Anyway, that's by yeah. the way. I mean, I think Manu should have gone out of the way for, to get him, but but they didn't. Uh, it's an ironic thing with him. Um, with the like VAR helped him to win the match the other night. Yep. And a few weeks ago, actually, he was in the paper. He'd no time for VAR. Really? I yeah. Didn't know that. He said it, the crowd or this and that, all the all the all the things that people say who are against VAR. Yeah. He said it. Slowed the game down. <laughs> and, and yeah. That. And it was at a time when Harry Kane remember Harry Kane went through and VAR proved him to be onside and most people thought he was offside. I think it was against Chelsea. I think he got a yeah. penalty and went on to win it. So there's there's a couple of occasions actually work. I was amazed to see it in the paper that he was saying, I've no time for VAR, to slow the game down, he did all the various things. But anyway, so it worked for him the other night. Uh, but he's done a, he's done a fantastic job eh? under very very difficult circumstances, and even moving into the new stadium that has been a bit of a, a disaster in many ways financially for them, uh, especially for the manager because he no money to yep. to buy the players, and and what he has done I think it, he's he's coached the players that he has well, and whatever he's bought in the transfer market has been pretty good. Yeah, you know it's a pretty young, fairly young team. Harry Kane what didn't play the other night as we know, uh, Deli Ali. Uh, Ericsson all these players Lucas Moura Lucas Moura came on buy. and done his stuff yeah, you know he's good, done his stuff good so I, I think overall uh, I think was he there four years yeah uh, he's done an extremely good job definitely uh, yeah Liam uh, the uh, game the other night uh, and the, the, the whole uh, question of um, well first of all your take on Pochettino because you watch him very closely uh, from uh, uh, a neighbourhood of North London. Um, I've, I'm sure you admire him. Uh, he's, he has done remarkable work with very little uh, money to spend. Yeah, well, they've spent their money well, though, Eamon. Mean, we're talking about how Manchester United have wasted a lot of money. Spurs yeah. have really bought well, you know. Yeah. And they, they've bought well as well since he's gone in there. But the, 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 the good operations in the transfer market were there before Pochettino arrived, so it's, uh, he's, he's inherited a good situation, and he's also inherited a lot of good young players. You know, they bought Deli Ali from uh, uh, Milton Wimbledon. Keynes Dons. You know, when he was 16, 17, and of course he's turned into a very fine player. So the the, the recruitment that Spurs has been excellent. You know, so right. he, he's he's come into that situation which has served him well. But he looks a winner, aim, and he looks organised. And yeah. the thing you say about all this, you know, most of the time you watch Spurs play is that they're given their everything, aren't they? They're given their yeah. everything. And uh, in difficult circumstances, because we've also discussed was how difficult it must be to keep those players happy and to keep their agents happy because, you know, the, people... Yeah, the wages be, are not extravagant, are they? Yeah, people must be trying to entice them away with, with bigger yes. wages, with higher salaries and so forth. So I think he's done a brilliant job, absolutely brilliant job. I think he got a bit fortunate the other night. I think City uh, will be kicking themselves. Uh, you know, we're probably going to go on to that defensively. Uh, the, 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 the Guardiola was down by Laporte badly. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it was a game that the, the way Manchester City played going forward, they should have won quite comfortably. But because of their defence, uh, once again, they're out of the Champions League. Yeah, uh, Liam asked me yesterday, John, uh, to check on the players, the defenders that uh, Pep Guardiola 
has brought in mm. and where they came from. Because we must remember Mancini was there before he won the league. I think he won it twice. Uh, Pellegrini also won the Premier League. And um, Liam was asking about our old friend Mangala. Well, he was brought in. He came from <laughs> Benfica. Uh, he was brought in uh, actually by um, Pellegrini. And uh, But what Pep has done, he brought in Laporte for 58 uh, million sterling, which was a record. He broke the record. Uh, and he broke the record for John Stones, 50 million sterling. Uh, he, You're an admirer of uh, Guardiola. How is it that he can't get, after three seasons there, a defence that you could even describe as adequate? When you think of the goals the other night, Son's first two goals, well, it was just, uh, they were a mess. And well, then the second goal was a good goal. The first one was a yeah. Go on. yeah. Well, Laurenti then, uh, yeah, from the a, corner, a kick. corner kick. Vincent Company, who only plays maybe once every four or five weeks in really big games, and then Laporte, this record, who was at fault for one of Son's goals and was at fault also for the goal that settled it in the end. Uh, for was at fault for the both goals, Aim the first two goals. He was, yeah, yeah. Ball. He overran the ball in midfield and and, That's and, right. and lost it and Spurs broke and Song put her away well and then he, he took a bad touch on the end of the box he tried to intercept and he knocked it into Song's path again so he was at fault yeah. for nearly yeah. three goals. Yeah, and he's a player that has been praised all season. But the point I'm I want the, the question I want to ask you, John, uh, is uh, isn't part of being uh, a top coach that you create after three seasons a good defence. And if you keep buying bad defenders, and Danilo is another one that springs immediately to mind, 24 million, uh, can't get in the side now, he's not much of a player. So you have Laporte, you have Stones, who was left out the other night, uh, you have Danilo, you have Fabian Delph playing left-back, he's a midfield player from Aston Villa. Uh, does that raise a question mark about Guardiola's judgment? Well, it obviously raises the way you've explained it, Eamon. It certainly raises a question about him picking defenders and how to defend. Uh, Is there something wrong with the way I just explained it? Uh, or no, inaccurate? No, I think you've explained it very well. I'm not, I don't necessarily agree with you with the overall picture of Manchester City. Because, uh, I mean, how did they win the league last year with record number of points? How did they win the cup? How did they win the, the various trophies that he is? I think he's won over the years. Uh, there's, there's, he hasn't done anything at Manchester City, if you look at the record, that Pellegrini didn't do before him or Mancini, except uh, last year they won the Premier League with a record number of points. He can only do what he can do, Eamon. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's employed to do what he has done over the last two years. The first season was very good. It was very good last season. He's in the running for the quadruple this year, in the running. He's out of, he's out of two of them now. But you have to take his overall picture uh, of it. I mean, if you look, uh, look at his defence, it's not perfect by any means, and there should be more emphasis to it. But you have to look at the matches he's won. You know, there's teams over the years that great defences uh, didn't concede many goals, but didn't score many goals. That's, that's his philosophy on the game. You don't agree with it. I don't think it's perfect by any means. But his idea of defending is to be at the other end scoring goals, which he does most of the time. Isn't it true, um, before I move on to Lima, of course the idea is you defend by you know, being in the other team's half, putting them under pressure, and also working very hard to get the ball back when you lose yeah. it. Yeah. However, when you play the better teams, and it's shown in the Champions League for the last three seasons, uh, Monaco uh, gave them a hiding uh, at, at home. They scored three against them that night. Uh, a brilliant goal from Mbappe, a brilliant goal from hmm. Falcao. Uh, Liverpool stuffed them three 0 at Anfield. When you get to the later stages and you get to play the better teams, you're not going to be able to camp okay. in their half. Well, well, if you're going, and you're going to have well, just to be finished. Okay. The question: You're going to have to defend. Yeah, of course you do. I'm not disagreeing with basic. all of that. I mean, but you have to look at the whole picture, Aaron. You talk about the player, the but manager. this is part on, of the hang, whole hang, picture. Now you've had your say. You. We've, you talked about the managers before did the same as Pellegrino. Did any of them win the European Cup? No. No. Well, you didn't say that. 
Oh, Tiago. Well, okay, we go with that's that's we, we mean, leave uh, we leave that did out. Did anyone but say Mancini was the greatest manager coach in the world? Did anyone say Pellegrini was? No, but we're th- talking does that about matter? We're not. We're been... not saying. I never said he was the greatest okay. manager in the world or the coach in the world. But he, he does what he does. I don't agree with everything he does defensively. He should defend right. better. But that's what he believes in. And it, it hasn't served okay. him too badly doing what he's doing. There's nothing perfect about it, Damien. When the great Italian teams were doing it in AC Milan and Inter Milan and all the day, we, I, I did, and I'm sure you did, complained about, well, they've sewn up shop. I did. No, well, you might I might have complained about it because they didn't go well, for AC it. AC Milan didn't shut up hmm? shop. AC Milan didn't shut up shop. Well, they did they most, of the the Italian, most of the Italian teams did. They had did. Marco Van Basten. They had great players. I know they did, but they didn't always attack all the time. No, but they right. defended. And the okay, was well, a let's, go back, let's go back to Guardiola. He does what he does. I don't agree with everything he does, but it has served him well in, what, in his overall career. Amy. Liam, the question of uh, City's ability to defend and arguably all of uh, Guardiola's teams, the emphasis is clearly on attack, but then if you have, you know, great forwards, you can afford that luxury up to a point. Uh, he's been three seasons at Manchester City. He's bought bad defenders. Uh, he's broken transfer record twice uh, for very, very ordinary players who can't really get in his team now. John Stones being one of them, Danilo being another one. Uh, what do you make of this argument John and I are having? Uh, well, yeah, I, you know... I, I'm I'm uh, a bit with John and a bit with yourself. You might say I'm sitting on the fence, but um, you know I love the way Guardiola plays football. I love the fact that it's all attack and fair players and goals and so forth. Uh, but you have to say, you know, over the last period of time, both with City and with Bayern Munich, you know, defensively it has let him down in the Champions League. If he's managing two clubs there that pretty much start odds every year and in Germany well odds on to win the league you know there's there's there are no opponents since since Klopp left left Dortmund uh, uh, to to rival Bayern Munich so he had that going from he's also had it going from Manchester City now he won the league last year he didn't win it the first year Chelsea won it uh, he he might win it this year he might not because of Liverpool being so good but you have to say that in the Champions League uh, his his uh, lack of of giving importance to defending has let him down and let him down badly. You know he hasn't made. I don't think he's made the semi final. You could check that, Eamon. Maybe no, he hasn't. The next program, but he no, hasn't made the semi final with Bayern Munich or or with or with Manchester City, and that's despite all the resources being in his favour. So yes. he, 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 he definitely is 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 is, is Achilles' heel. And uh, but um, many of the games uh, he wins because of his philosophy. I, I, I side with John on that. And even the other night, you know, I just couldn't believe that the referee disallowed the goal uh, because of VAR. Uh, it was a correct decision, but looking at it in real time, I just didn't see it, you know. And I thought that no, was him in, and, <laughs> and deservedly so, because going forward they were they were really good. De Bruyne was great, and Sterling was great, and so yeah. forth. You know, a player like Laporte, if they had a better centre half, they'd probably be in the Champions League semi final. And it's and, and it's the selection of these guys that that I would say has let him down. You know, he's bought plenty. We, we thought John Stones was going to be he, he was on about John Stones being great defender and so forth, but I haven't seen it, you know. So uh whether he he doesn't coach them or whether they're not good enough when he buys them, that's definitely his Achilles heel. Okay, uh, John. That's a fair yeah, summary. I, mean, fair I think. Yeah, I, I mean, think, I think. I think if you, if you look at any team's uh, uh, weaknesses, I mean, you're going to find them. Uh, and I, but this well, is I, a recurring. I mean, that's the point that I, Liam's making. I'm making in the Guardiola canon of work. This is a recurring. Yes, but so is the thing. other recurring thing, Amos, where they attack players, they score goals, and do all that. They do that as well. Mm. You know, like it, it, it's not one or the other. I mean, if if you take, I don't. Again, I agree with you. I think it should be more emphasis in the defence. But if you if you concentrate on his defence, I don't think it's fair in Guardiola to say that uh, that the players De Bruyne and and all the players that they go attacking. As Liam said the other night, uh, and don't forget the other night, Spurs conceded four goals. Yeah. 
you know? Well, uh, now, in, forget in Pochettino's about favour, I have to say, when Sissoko got injured in the first half, mm. He actually didn't have a midfield player no. on the bench because Harry Winks was injured. So he had to no, but put on... Charles, but Pochettino did great. We've already done Pochettino. He has done extremely well. We're talking about Guardiola now. But Guardiola, most of the time, is attacking most of the time. And that's how he defends. I don't agree with it. But you have to, give him, you have to balance it. You can, you can talk about his defence all day. And I'll agree, it's not as good as it should be. But you're eliminating what they do closing the ball down, scoring the goals, the good, the amount of goals that they do. And, and he does win most of his matches. It's not perfect, Eamon, but nobody has it perfect. No. But I think you've got to balance it up. I think what he's, what he's brought to the game has been, has been positive rather than negative. That's okay. for sure. Okay.